Anomalies are one of the primary ways that scientists earn scientific research points to unlock new technologies. There are only three required tools, and of those required tools, they're almost always in the same room. There, you just need a wrench, an anomaly scanner, which you can always find in your locker, and you'll need one of these portable apes, which you could almost, again, always find in an anomaly generator room or right next to it. Next, all you need is some plasma, and you just insert the plasma in the generator, and you click Generate Anomaly, and that will generate an anomaly practically anywhere possible on the station that isn't like a wall. So you will oftentimes while playing, will see people in a uh, comment chat say, please call out the anomaly if you see it, or so-and-so anomaly is here. And as a scientist, your goal is to go deal with it because anomalies are very, very luck dependent. They will often spawn in really bad spots or they will oftentimes be an anomaly that is not compatible with the area they are in. And what that means is that certain anomalies are just by design more dangerous than others and less compatible with being in certain areas. And I will get into that later in this video. I'm going to explain every single anomaly and how to deal with them. And uh, the only other thing I can uh, mention is that the only other way anomalies generate is through a random event that will spawn an anomaly. And if that happens, it will be a blue central command announcement saying, Our readings have detected a dangerous interspatial anomaly. Please inform the research team of low pulsating sounds heard throughout the station. And that is the only other way anomalies occur. Technically, there is a third way for anomalies to occur. Artifacts can spawn anomalies right on top of them, but there's no guaranteed way of doing that. I guess the event's not guaranteed either, though, so really I should be lumping them together. One thing worth mentioning is that anomaly vessels use five capacitors, and that means if you research better capacitors, or like, say, salvage, or your, your own science team gets access to better capacitors, you should consider replacing the normal capacitors inside as soon as you can. Why? Well, I could assure you the extremes. If I replace the five basic capacitors with five advanced uh, blue space capacitors, the point generation will increase massively. So with five blue space generate, uh, five blue space uh, capacitors, you earn 95% more points per second in this vessel, and that's obviously nothing to. That's nothing to sneeze at. That's almost doubling your points for the same amount of effort. You just have to remember to replace the capacitors. So uh, that is definitely something I would 100% recommend doing if you're going to be... If you get a good anomaly, take the time to upgrade the vessel. You will save minutes and perhaps dozens of minutes of research if you have good enough capacitors. Anyways, I will now move into how to deal with every single anomaly and advanced tricks of how to deal with anomalies. One trick I will recommend every single scientist do is you go to your robotic room in the Robotech Deluxe, there will be a remote signaler. You're going to want that and you either want a network configurator or a multi-tool because with these you can automate the process of keeping an anomaly stable very easily. So before we even set up the ape, what you want to do is you want to multi-tool the ape and then multi-tool it to your remote signaler. So when you link it, you just want to set it to toggle, which will just turn the device on and off. If you hover, hover over, it'll even say toggle to say device. You don't want to mess with anything else because the goal of an ape and the goal of automating it like this is that you want to keep an anomaly stable. So let's say the anomaly is right here. The first step is to use your scanner on it. And there's a decent do after, so keep this in mind. And you're going to want to observe its current severity, its state of growing, and the electric anomaly is one of the most annoying ones because it will shock you constantly. It is pretty much one of the only anomalies that will actually affect you without pulsing. Anyways, I'm out of range now. So it is growing. And due to how we set it up earlier, remember, uh, we can turn it on wherever we want. So we want to swap the particles to delta particles, which all you have to do is right click the ape, swap to delta, lock it so no one can mess with it. And if I just pick up the remote signal or Z, it will turn on. You can see the pink lights turned on. And you just watch your scanner. I don't even have to be in the same room, just to iterate. And as soon as it does that, you just press the end of the signal again, and it'll turn it off. And now it is stable without having to interact with the ape at all. And then, just to make it clear what you're supposed to do, with the anomaly scanner linked up to an anomaly, you want to bring it to a vessel. And that will now generate 13, well in this case 14 points uh, a second. And you can observe this very easily if you just go to a research uh, console every second we are indeed generating those points so this is an electrical anomaly electrical anomalies have two primary uh 
There's two primary effects of electrical anomalies. They shock everyone nearby constantly on no real set interval. So it makes dealing with them a little more annoying. And it makes them more dangerous than the other anomalies just inherently because of that. And they don't actually really change much through severity. What really changes as they get more severe is the damage goes up. And the amount of electrical arcs that it shoots out goes up. So... The electrical anomaly is tough to keep around unless it's in a really good spot because regardless of its severity, it is going to damage people nearby and it has the potential of hitting somebody really hard when it pulses. Um, at high severity, you can critically injure or kill multiple people every single pulse, which makes it significantly more dangerous than every other art anomaly in the game. So it is rare that you will ever keep one of these, especially if it starts at a higher severity. Uh, anomalies, when they spawn, can spawn anywhere between like 10 and like 40, 50 percent, something like that. I don't know the exact numbers, but if one of these spawns at 50 percent and it's in a location where anyone might possibly go, you pretty much have to get rid of it. Um, there's no real way. You, you can't move anomalies, so that's what I mean by there's a ton of luck involved. Oftentimes, anomalies will just straight up spawn in places that are, like, in the middle of security, in the middle of Atmos. It always picks Atmos for some reason. I don't know why. It just feels like it does. And you just have to get rid of them because people have to work there. And we're going to watch it pulse. And, yep, it shot me directly with an electrical beam. It doesn't do too much damage because, like I said, the severity is low. And if you hear that beeping, which I'm glad it's doing that, that means the anomaly in a vessel is growing it is a low beep and again now that i have this remote signal set up all i have to do is press z i can sit here not even looking at the ape just watch it wait for the growing to go away and now it's stable press z again we are good to go and that is a general rule of how to contain all anomalies without having to be there the rock anomaly is an exception and i'll get to that next so we must scan the rock anomaly and i could go i could go hook it up but i'm not actually trying to get research points the rock anomaly is actually a very safe anomaly. It doesn't inherently make enemies until you start mining, so that means that somebody will have to be there to actually deal with it. So that makes it somewhat safe to contain. Um, the downsides of the rock anomaly is that it makes physical objects. So this is the only anomaly in the game that you can't just reliably use the remote signaler because a rock can spawn in the ape it could spawn in front of the ape and even if you were to shotgun it and keep it right here a rock could still spawn inside the ape making it uh impossible to automate from a distance the only difference that i've seen from the rock anomaly it is brand new is that upon higher severities is that it will just generate rocks further away and more of them that seems to be the only real severe uh increase with this anomaly so the rock anomaly is actually rather easy to keep as long as it isn't in an apartment that would get disrupted by it too much. So if it's in maintenance or something, or just in a dead part of the station, or like in a dorm room or something, it's not really a harm to people. So uh, really for this one, all you're going to want to do is make a pickaxe. And uh, the pickaxe is a pretty competent weapon. And uh, the reason why you need a pickaxe is because this literally makes mineable rocks. But the pickaxe does... um. 5 slash, 5 blunt, 5 pierce, if you wield it, so it's a pretty competent weapon. And uh, you can make pickaxes without any technology at the uh, auto lathe. It just takes 10 steel, 5 wood, and you can have a pickaxe. And just I would just leave it on the ground near the rock anomaly, and I will show you what it does when it pulses. And again, this is another anomaly that doesn't really change how you handle it at higher severities. Pulse in 5 seconds, and this is a low severity anomaly. And as you can see, it didn't block the ape, but it makes these rocks nearby. So all you have to do is just take the pickaxe and break the rocks. And as you can see, I did make a mob, but the, again, the mob will only appear when you're actually actively mining. But they do do quite a lot of damage, so it is dangerous in that regard. But you could always just wait until you have somebody who can help you out. Uh, yeah, two mobs is enough to almost crit me. And even on a low severity, two mobs is actually kind of surprising. But again, they only will appear if somebody's actually mining it. So somebody should be there to help deal with it. Uh, it's a pretty high maintenance uh, anomaly, but it's not all that dangerous. So as long as a scientist who is willing to do it is working on it, uh, you can manage it relatively reasonably. Up next is the gravity anomaly. And with the gravity anomaly, I would absolutely recommend you get a Geiger counter. And 
you're going to have to scan it like every other anomaly. The black hole, or the uh, gravity anomaly, is... It basically just pulls in objects constantly and emits radiation, and the radiation severity depends on its severity. So, this anomaly is actually one of the best anomalies in the game to have because you can counterplay it entirely regardless of its severity. And uh, so I need to put it to Zeta Particles and then relock it. And remember, now that it's hooked up, I just have to turn it back on to keep it stable. And it should only take one shot or two. One shot normally does it. And as we can see with this Geiger counter, is even if I stand in the middle and it emits radiation, at, it's 0 0.5, 0 0.6 rads at worst. But what you can do, and I would recommend anyone do when you're trying to contain these, is you just want to re surround it in plasma windows. And directional windows works better because it saves space. And uh, you will often just have plasma as a uh, scientist. But plasma windows completely block radiation. Or block almost all of it. I don't know if it's completely. But it makes it significantly safer for everyone to deal with it. And the only thing this thing does when it pulses is it throws the objects. It throws all the nearby objects away. Which again is almost always harmless. So this is an anomaly that you can very easily up the severity, and this is probably the best anomaly I'd say for um, either this or the pyro anomaly is the best for point generation. So if you ever want to increase the severity, which if you haven't figured out by now, severity of the anomaly it increases the amount of points you earn, I would honestly put this up towards 70-80%. And uh, something I sh you should do is make sure you clear the uh, anomaly out from objects just in case that they block the ape shots but again it's normally not really a problem so we're just going to keep growing and as you can see the point output it is scaling up with the severity and i'm just gonna let it keep going as you can see there is some radiation happening but it's pretty minor overall and not too much of a worry so something i just learned as of right now is that you actually want to encase it in a square which I just learned as I was doing this, because, I mean, there's always something to learn in this game. Uh, encasing in a square actually will stop the radiation entirely, so there you go. Uh, so I just turn on the containment to stop it from growing, because we do obviously do not want to super critical these anomalies. And one more shot should stabilize it. There we go. And now we could basically farm this infinitely, and you just have to deal with some annoying objects getting thrown. But, I mean, this anomaly is generating enough points on its own... And will generate points infinitely if you're just paying careful attention to it. To the point now, we are generating 65 points a second. And that on its own can max out science research in probably uh, 30, 40 minutes. Without any extra research, it is actually a crazy amount of research point. The liquid anomaly is again one of the safest anomalies in the game. Uh, its level of safety definitely uh, depends on... Its severity, it will typically generate more dangerous chemicals inside of it uh, if it's at a higher severity. But even at a really high severity, you can manage it pretty uh, well. This is again another anomaly that can just be boxed in with just even normal glass. This anomaly doesn't do any damage to structures. So you could actually maintain all of the liquid inside a glass box like this and you could pretty much forget about it. Um... Another thing that makes this safer is uh, if you research the chemical analysis goggles, you can't see it through the glass, so that's one of the only downsides. But if you were to get direct line of sight with it, you can see that this one's actually making unstable mutagen. Uh, so that's what I mean by it's making a pretty dangerous chemical and it's at a low severity. So this is another one that you can definitely pump up the severity by quite a lot to like 60-70%. To make more points out of it because it's danger is pretty random and uh i guess you could try to keep a low severity and try to farm it for medicine just in case you aren't aware of this you can draw you can take a syringe and draw the mutagen or whatever chemicals in it at the time directly out of it so you can use it for uh, things other than research points, and I think that's what makes the liquid anomaly really cool, is that it's multifaceted. So walling it in may not always be the right option, because you won't be able to figure out exactly what's in it. Uh, I guess you could, like, just make a wind door or something to contain it, but then you're going to have, like, leaks. But that's just a... Th there's several options for this one. Uh, it's also brand new, so I haven't directly seen what people are doing on live servers, 
but from what I can tell, this is pretty much just a way to do it. Um, and I can wait for it to pulse just to show you how it works. So upon pulsing, it will scatter its liquid inside. And if you're actually nearby, regardless if you build a glass box, it will actually splatter it on you as well. And in this case, that it was unstable mutagen, so I took some radiation damage. And uh, the higher severity, from what I can tell, will either splash more on you and further away, or both. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it's kind of hard to test things like that. But either way, at a higher severity, you're still going to make more points. And in general, you just... No one should really be standing around anomalies. I don't know why people do that. And at that point, I just say it's natural selection if somebody kills himself for standing next to the glowing alien anomaly. Up next is the ice anomaly. And the ice anomaly is actually another anomaly that is fairly easy to deal with. Uh, one of its one of its passives is that it will make the area nearby colder, and cold is a little bit harder to deal with than hot because uh, species like lizards have a harder time in colder environments. But anyways, that's a minor effect. Uh, it being cold is normally never really an issue. It might mess up the fire locks. It's more so annoying than anything. So uh, again, let me uh, just set this type to delta. We could stabilize it. All it takes is one shot. Turn it off. Oh, I'm gonna make sure I didn't decay it. Oh, we're good. And again, the ice anomaly is another one that you just kind of put in a glass box. However, I recommend putting it in not directional windows. And why do you want to do that? Because the ice anomaly shoots out icicles that will damage nearby objects. And it seems to shoot them in random directions. So if you don't wall it in with the squares, you can't tell the damage of directional windows. Directional windows don't have a visual state for being damaged. And uh, all you really need to maintain this anomaly forever is checking on it after at least every other pulse and you need a welding mask or if you can ask engineers you just need something that provides welding protection but welding mask you can find uh, oftentimes uh, there will even be welding masks in these rooms uh, this time there isn't but some maps have them uh, mapped in here otherwise you can just go to maintenance or again just ask engineering for a welding mask and why? Because, as I said, it will shoot icicles that do damage to nearby objects. At low severity, the icicles do very, very little damage, and you will have to do very little upkeep to maintain it. But, again, this is another anomaly I would recommend at least going up to like 50% uh, severity, because the only thing that gets more severe is the damage. And if you're being a good scientist, you're going to be managing your anomalies. And all you have to do is quickly repair the windows, and you can farm points on this infinitely unless somebody sabotages it or you just forget but yet again that's kind of part of the game is incompetency so i will just show you what it does when it pulses it is going to pulse in five seconds and you will see it real time shoot the windows and yeah the severity at this point was so low that it didn't even crack them but even if you don't see the damage uh, you can always just press z with your welding torch and left click any of the reinforced windows and you can even repair multiple at a time so within barely 10 seconds of your time, you can fully repair the windows and go on ignoring this anomaly and let it generate points. And I will just increase its severity to show you what a higher severity is like. The higher severity, again, like I said, you're going to have to maintain this more, but you'll do a lot of research for your science, and I'm sure the scientists will appreciate that. So make sure you don't let it explode because... Uh, just make sure you don't let it break the glass windows because it can do some pretty major damage to like walls and infrastructure and potentially someone if they get hit by it. So we're going to be a little over 50% by the time it pulses and you're going to see the windows crack because it does significantly more damage with higher severity. So we're at 56% when it pulses and yes it cracked the window but even still uh isn't really that hard to maintain. Just show up every once in a while to make sure the windows are still there, and if they're not there, replace them and repair them. The Pyro Anomaly is one of the safer anomalies in the game as well. It really only does two things. It will make the ambient room nearby hotter, and it will set people on fire nearby. Uh, the lower severity, the less fire stacks and damage it does. Higher severity, the more it burns you, the more damage you'll take. And I think it increases the temperature more. Um, but this, again, has a somewhat easy way of dealing with it. Where, well, let me again just make sure it's stable. At lower severities, you can practically ignore it entirely. 
it barely increases the temperature of the station and like just having distro on and waste will deal with it on its own uh so like at 20 30 40 percent severity uh you could honestly just leave it alone entirely like this you don't really need to worry about it um some more advanced strategies i see is you can just use normal directional windows to save materials so again just like every other no, like most of the anomalies it seems you just box it in like so and that will trap some of the heat inside and what i've seen some advanced scientists do is you actually just uh get somebody with a fire axe or an rcd to space the area underneath it because then the heat will just escape entirely if you're the window were to ever break you don't have to worry about releasing superheated air uh, there's nothing really to show with the higher severity, it just burns you more, but I will still show you what the pulse does if you're standing nearby. Do a pulse in 5 seconds, and you'll see what it does. At a low severity, it will just set you on fire, and the fire stacks are very minimal. You can basically just click the stop, drop, and roll button once, and you'll take, like, barely a point or two of damage. I took two damage, which will literally heal on its own now, so this anomaly's actually gotten less deadly in the past day because of the passive healing update so yeah the pyro anomaly is great for scientists and as long as it's not in a terrible spot the flesh anomaly the flesh anomaly is uh an anomaly you will pretty much never keep i have never seen a flesh anomaly kept for more than a few minutes uh the reason for this is is multifaceted it will spawn mobs no matter what severity. Even at the lowest severity you can have one, it will still spawn one mob every pulse. Now, high severities, it spawns a lot of mobs. And it isn't necessarily that they're hard to fight, it's that there's no way to really contain it automatically. And, um... It just... Somebody will have to constantly be fighting mobs. And it, it, it spawns the mobs in a pretty wide range as well, so that makes it the like the perfect location for a, a meat anomaly is very very unlikely to be anywhere that you will actually want to keep it if it's anywhere near a department you're going to basically be killing them passively with mobs uh if it's in maintenance somewhere well then a scientist is going to have to spend his entire shift fighting mobs um so that makes it really hard to ever want to keep it uh like i said the only difference between severities is that at like 10 20 percent severity will spawn one and at like 80 percent it can spawn like five or six mobs and uh, I don't think it, I think the mobs that it picks is completely random, but they're all basically the same. They all just are flesh mobs that kind of run at you and just hit you. And one of the mobs does nothing as far as I'm aware, it just sits on the ground. But anyways, I will show you what it does when it pulses. Um, I'm not really aware of any strategies to really keep these. Uh, you used to be able to build railings, but they just break out of those now. Um... Maybe you can set up, like, electric grills, but then at what point are you just making a super deadly trap? So it will pulse in about five seconds. Not in about, it just will. And, see, this is one of the useless mobs that I'm talking about. Uh, I don't know what it does. It just, I think it just blocks you. So, I mean, just pick up the nearest object and hit it a few times. So when you get those, it's not a problem. But I'm just going to increase the severity and show you why this is really difficult to contain so the severity is up to 37 percent and just at 37 percent it starts becoming unreasonable and remember anomalies can spawn at this so it spawned three mobs and what's nice about the mobs is that you can just one click push them over with your fist so if you're careful you can fight them pretty much without really having to get too deep into damage i mean obviously you'd want a weapon but uh this is just an extreme example that they're pretty easy to fight. They do do a decent bit of damage, but... Like, if I just have a weapon, it gets easier. And don't hit the anomaly. Uh, but as you can see, even two mobs, without very careful pr uh, planning, can get you killed. And I think this is the real reason why no one wants to really do this. Is that, even if the mobs are easier, you'd still have to constantly kill them. And that's just not super fun. To have to babysit this super hard um even with like a wall of grills like they try to path around it but i guess like if you wanted to make a trap you could shove them over and push them into it obviously you'd want to have insulated gloves or else you could kill yourself so i guess you can kind of make like a meat grinder 
Uh, maybe if you're super creative, you can literally make a conveyor belt that just pushes uh, one direction into electrified grills. But again, at that point, you're modifying so much of the like station and making a dangerous trap that you could probably get yelled at. But you most likely get yelled at by security for making electric grills. And yeah, you just like I said, you just don't really ever see this anomaly kept. Finally, the last anomaly is the blue space anomaly, and this one might be the one of the most complex ones to explain how to keep it. I don't know the exact threshold, but it's somewhere around 30 plus percent severity that makes it pretty much unreasonable to keep. And the reason for that is, is that every time it pulses when it's above a certain severity, which I think is around 30 to 40 percent, it will move. And that means you can't automate it, and it could teleport into a really dangerous area. And when it pulses it at that severity, it will also teleport people a random distance from it. And that could teleport people in the space, it could teleport people in the walls. It's one of the most dangerous anomalies due to its volatility. Uh, but at this severity, if I just stabilize it, which I just need to hit it with one Epsilon particle, it will never move if it's at this low of severity and you don't allow it to grow. So this is an anomaly that you never want to get it above high severity, otherwise you basically need to kill it. So it's not as unusable as a flesh anomaly, but people can still be stupid and run into it and teleport into a dangerous spot. But at this low of severity, uh, it's not too big of a deal. I mean, I say that and then it just teleported me uh, like 15 tiles away. So it can still be a problem. So that's the final anomaly in the game right now. I think there's another one being worked on. But I can cover that separately, or just somebody could probably figure it out. So yeah, that's really it for explaining how to maintain each anomaly very efficiently. Uh, I'm not claiming to know every single perfect way of maintaining them, but I, this is just what I typically see done. The blue space, uh, super critical, will basically teleport everyone nearby to a... As far as I'm aware, a totally random location, or it might swap people. I'm not sure which uh, of that it actually does, but I have seen people get teleported in the space where no one was there before, so I'm assuming it's just random. I think it can swap people as well, but either way, it just teleports you, and it can be very disorienting. Yeah, the electrical anomaly has been broken for basically ever. Uh, that more or less killed power on over half this station. And uh, that would... I mean, it definitely uh, does a ton of damage. Fire Anomaly will explode into a plasma fire that can teleport through walls, so walling it in uh, doesn't prevent this from happening. It will eventually burn itself out because it basically just makes plasma and sets it on fire. It doesn't just like make like an infinite plasma pull or anything. But uh, this will definitely heat up the nearby rooms by a significant margin, and anyone caught in the fire will most likely die. Flesh Anomaly will scatter meat kudzu across a large radius and spawn a bunch of additional mobs. Uh, one way to deal with the uh, meat kudzu is meat kudzu does not survive space. So what people often do is they will just space windows to kill the meat kudzu or you can have an Atmos tech come in with a fire axe or somebody with an RCD, which I guess science themselves could do that if you have researched it. Uh, the super critical of the meat anomaly can be dealt with rather easily. What the meat vines do is they damage you if you touch them. The ice anomaly explodes into like a freeze-on like bomb. It doesn't do that much damage. Uh, I've seen it space the floor before, but I'm not entirely sure like what causes that. Um, but yeah, the damage is not the worst ever, but it does also make miasma afterwards and cool down the area. So it can be dangerous in that regard, but not the most dangerous of the anomalies.
The rock anomaly spawns dozens of mobs and spreads its rocks over a dozen plus tiles away in every direction. Uh, it is there is just so many enemies you'll have to kill, and you have to destroy all the rocks. So you might not even know where all the enemies are at right away. It requires a massive cleanup effort, and it may kill several people. These mobs don't hit. These mobs hit fairly hard, so uh, this might be a security getting guns type of situation. The gravity anomaly is one of the most devastating. Um, it entirely deletes the floor infrastructure, and it will even dislodge things that were never meant to be dislodged and throw them. Like, it unanchors windows and tosses them, it unanchors walls and tosses them. The repair effort's pretty laborious because, I mean, you have to deconstruct these or, like, toss them into space because they're unanchored objects that weren't meant to be unanchored. So each one of these requires hand de destruction. Uh, RCDs do help, but either way, it's still a lot of work. And what the liquid anomaly does when it explodes, it will spawn these reagent-based slimes uh, in a pretty large radius. And some of the reagents are rather deadly, like that one's napalm. Uh, this one is just toxin. Uh, and this one's actually bicaridine, so that's uh, pretty interesting. And if you kill them, they will bleed their respective chemical. And once they die, uh, you can basically mop up these puddles to get the reagents. Like the bicaridine one could actually be used to get medicine. So again, even the super critical of this anomaly can also have interesting benefits for both Syndicate and Normal Crew alike. And that wraps up all of the anomaly super critical. And I think that'll wrap up this video. This video is really long, but I wanted it to be in depth. Thank you for watching.